Koto. Um, nice to be here. Um, grateful to be able to speak at this um, event. Uh, I just realized I've left my silly eyebrows on, so let me turn that off. Um, never mind, the settings aren't on here. Um, all right. So um, I am a Otago graduate. Um, I did my Bachelor of Science and Honours and Masters of Science um, all at Otago. Um, I did my um, postgraduate qualification in the Gisoni Lab in the Department of Anatomy. And after my time in research, I moved across into teaching. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about that transition in a moment. But the, um, the school that I work in is a school called Ormiston Junior College. Um, it is a small, uh, well, it's not that small, actually. Um, it's in a relatively new suburb in the sort of east of Auckland. Um, it's only four years old, and it's one of our new um, modern learning environment schools. It's one of those classic um, no classrooms, um, you know, heaps of students in the class, lots of team teaching, um, which might sound really bizarre to most of us because that's not the schooling that we started with. Um, so it's a junior college. There are We have years sevens through 10. So we capture a little bit of intermediate and the bottom end of high school. Um, and because we've got these flexible learning spaces, we have the freedom to take um, teaching and learning in a direction that is authentic to the 21st century needs. So a lot of the work that our students do is project-based or inquiry-based learning, where we integrate all of the different learning areas together. And I'm sure as um, developing scientists, you can recognize the need for not only skills and science in whatever careers you take, but also the ability to use mathematics and the ability to communicate your work through various literacy skills, uh, potentially even um, visual arts and design to help you communicate your work in such a way to conferences, to journals, to books, to whatever medium um, you're working in. So we really value the fact that our curriculum has a perfect ability to be meshed in together and allow the learning that we do to be um, a little bit more authentic to our learners. They can take a, an interest and explore that from multiple angles rather than having to learn graphs and maths and then go to science class and relearn how to do graphs and science so that you can do maths for science and it all ends up doubling up quite a lot. Um, it's a really cool space. The school's only four years old. It's in a recently developed suburb that if you went there 10 years ago, um, it was mostly farmland. Uh, we've done some really cool things in the school as well. For instance, uh, we most recently had our production of Shrek Junior, the musical, which was um, truly outstanding and hilarious. And I saw some talent that absolutely blew me away. Um, so I'll share a little bit about some of the science stuff that we've done just because it's more relevant to this area. Um, but as a officially a science teacher on paper, um, I've ended up teaching in a whole variety of um, different learning areas, which is really exciting for me because I, I love my science, but I, I can never make up my mind about what it is I love the most. Um, so I get to explore all those new things alongside my learners, which is really exciting. Um, so here we've got um, some of our students doing um, part of a passion project, which we've called um, uh, OJC Science Academy, um, not named after the um, Science Academy down in Otago. I didn't pick the name. I just rolled with it. Um, these guys here are doing the classic onion, uh, onion skin cell slides. Um, one of our groups did this big project on what makes you you. Is it nature or is it nurture? And they've built this really beautiful infographic of everything they learned across their project. Um, because we're in a school, we have the ability to reach out to some really, really cool people. Hey, and, Hannah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Your slides seem to be stuck. I don't mm. know if that's happening for everyone else, but we just still see the map in the production. Great. Let's see if replaying it fixes that. How are we now? Yeah, that's better. Cool. Um, so this is the way infographic I was talking about. Um, they can uh, model their learning and show us what they've done in a number of ways. Um, we've had the ability to have in some really cool speakers. Um, we've recently had in Nano Girl, which is absolutely awesome. She told us her life story and um, basically, you know, a whole bunch of cool, exciting science things that they can engage with, with really, really simple principles. Um, we've had in Dr. Giles Yeo from Cambridge University. Um, you might know of him from his work in um, the genetics of obesity. 
Um, so there's lots and lots of really cool scope that you can do when your curriculum allows you to be flexible and um, follow the learner's needs, um, as well as um, creating projects um, that don't rely on one single learning area. But these are just sort of some of the science heavy stuff that we've got up to just to kind of keep it relevant to um, genetics and micro and biochem. And in fact, because we've got these project-based learning where the students take on a lot of the initiative themselves and run their own learning, they sometimes dig a heck of a lot deeper than you would expect. Like I've had learners come to me from other groups saying, hey, we hear you're a biologist. Um, can you tell us about how, um, we, we were looking at, at how octopus change color. Can you tell us what um, these organs are, the um, chromatophores are? And I'm like, wow, I don't think I've met anyone in high school ever talking about chromatophores and other sort of um, cellular organs like that, which I just thought was really exciting because they can go as far with it as they want. They're not constrained by, you know, this is the topic that we're teaching. Um, so all of that said, um, it's really exciting what my school does, but for the purposes of a careers evening, you're probably more interested to hear um, how and why I might've made a decision to move into teaching when I've come from um, really academic genetics. Um, and if that sounds like you, um, how do you move forward into this kind of field? So um, yeah, how did I get from this, a um, enthusiastic young scientist working away in a research lab to a teacher of all these, um, all these wonderful people? Um, so I moved into, you know, I always love my genetics. I love knowing how things work. Um, I wanted to take every paper under the sun. Um, if I had it my way, I would have done like immunology, a whole bunch of biochemistry, probably some German and whatever else on the side. Um, and yeah, a love of knowing how things works means that I moved into a um, an honors project where I looked at um, the development of the fetal brain. And it was really exciting because it had a little touch of immunology, a whole bunch of neuroscience, heaps of immunohistochemistry, um, qPCR, all the good stuff. And then I actually moved into a PhD because it was all going really excitingly. It was going really well. I was um, loving the work that I was doing. I was loving contributing to um, science. And especially I was loving dropping into like seminars and conferences and finding opportunities to share my work. Um, and as I got into my PhD, I, um, you know, I, again, I really engaged with it. I was at working at all the, um, every volunteer option, where whether it was the open day, um, International Science Festival. I would join in on things for the Brain Health Research Center and um, anything else that genetics or anatomy were running. Uh, I got into teaching and demonstrating. I actually started demonstrating in my second year of uni um, and speaking at conferences, sharing posters, all that good stuff. And increasingly, I found as I was going through the process that um, I was heavily engaged in all of the science communication and all of the demonstrating, teaching, working in outreach and working with young people. Um, and it wasn't until, it was quite, I was quite a fair way in when I kind of had this realization that I'd been sort of avoiding all of my, not, not entirely, but over prioritizing the teaching and the outreach over, um, over the research. And I was like, oh, you know, it's just cause I'm gonna, you know, go be a lecturer and I really need the, the experience and, you know, it's all valuable skills. Um, and, just on the side, I picked up this job working up at a boarding school um, at for St. Hilda's in Dunedin, um, just as a part-time gig, just to have some extra cash. And as I was working there, I started tutoring and I realized that actually um, all of this stuff that I'm doing, all of this teaching, all of this outreach, like there is a very real career in it. And up until working at this high school, I wasn't too sure about working with teenagers um, but that really, really turned it around for me. I was like, these guys are really awesome. It doesn't matter what level you're teaching science at. There's nothing more prestigious about teaching at a university versus a high school versus a primary school, anything like that, because um, actually just the ability to help somebody get further than they were yesterday is um, remarkable. And it's really, really exciting to watch people grow at any stage of their development. So I moved into teaching. I did my Master of Teaching and Learning at the University of Otago College of Education, um, and, which is a one-year program and found myself here at Ormiston Junior College. 
So I'll tell you a little bit about the process of how you might choose to make this transition if it's for you. I should add that I, I didn't finish the PhD. I, I left it and wrote up with a master's so I could um, move sideways into teaching. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made. Um, so don't be afraid to do what's right for you as well. So yeah, let's have a look at what a move into teaching might look like if that is your jam. So to be a teacher, you need to have um, either a Bachelor of Education, um, but this is only for primary and I should have added in here early childhood education. Um, if you want to teach at high school or if you want to move from a degree you already have into teaching at, at any level, um, you can go to an institution who offers a graduate diploma or in teaching or a graduate diploma in education, or there are a few universities who offer the Master of Teaching and Learning. Um, there are different qualifications, but fundamentally they all offer you the same thing, and that is a ticket to teaching. Um, there are a number of different educational providers who offer um, these options. And um, if you've already got a degree, like the graduate diploma or the master of teaching and learning as one year programs is an excellent way to step in and um, transition across to teaching. Um, so what does teacher training actually look like? Uh, what do they want from you? So moving into um, teacher education, certainly at the University of Otago, um, what they want to hear from you when you apply is um, not only not only do they want your CV, but they uh, your CV, your transcript, and um, all of your qualifications, as well as a, a B plus average, which I understand is a little flexible depending on who you are. But they want to know: um, Are you the right person to be moving into this um, into this career? So they ask for a handwritten statement on um, why you want to teach. Um, so it really gets you to dig deep into what is it that drives you into teaching, you know. Um, and when I was talking to my classmates in the teacher training program, we had everything from um, I always wanted to be a teacher ever since I was a little kid, right through to I sort of like had a talking to from a family member or um, sort of had an epiphany moment, kind of like I did, and realized that actually this was the degree for me. Um, most of the teacher trainings run through universities or um, other educational facilities. I think um, there's a couple of, there might be a couple of polytechs. I'd have to double check for you on that one. Um, and then there is one other, um, there is one other uh, way that you can go through. And that is through um, a program called Teach First New Zealand or Ako Matatahu. And that is essentially an on the, go, on the job training program where you spend, I think, two years working on your Master of Teaching and Learning, and but you're in the classroom straight away and you do all of your teacher education in the school holidays and on the sides. Um, and that could be a really good pathway for you if you're really keen to get straight in the classroom, um, get a, essentially a stipend and to keep moving on. Um, with teaching while being somewhat employed. And I guess the final thing that's worth mentioning is if you are looking into moving into teaching, there are a few scholarships that you can apply for. Um, so the one that I had during my time at Otago was the Teach NZ um, Te Hauerau Scholarship. And that covers your fees and gives you a bit of a, I wouldn't call it a stipend because they pay you in um, lump sums, but they give you a bit of cash as well, which is really great to get you moving through. Um, University of Otago does have a master's coursework scholarship, which is another option for you. Um, the Teach NZ scholarship was the most common one that we found on our course. Um, there's a few different categories for that one there. So there are options to be funded while you are training as well, which is really, really valuable. So that's essentially my journey and hopefully a little bit about what you might want to know about moving into a career in teaching if that's your jam and I would be absolutely thrilled to have a chat with anyone who is thinking about teaching and wants to know a little bit more about that process so um, thanks all for having me here today. <laughs> <laughs>